I'm in uh, Costa Rica, beautiful country. I mean, cannot rave about Costa Rica enough. And folks who have been there um, have have uh, come back and say, you got to go. And Susie and I now totally get it. It's beautiful. The people are amazing. They are just so open to having you walk into their lives and show you what their lives are all about and sharing it. And uh, uh, Pura Vida is the phrase that uh, pays over there. I so, saw you on a horse. And dude, I, we, did, we, we, did, did everything. we did it all. And I, I, I did what I'm supposed to do, which is stay off my phone. Uh, Congratulations. Things, were, things went a little haywire well um, in the uh, in the NFL media group world towards the end of the week. And uh, I was on my phone more than I uh, planned to be. Uh, but my my uh, my my phone was buzzing quite a bit uh, middle of the week as well. And uh, it's because Stefan Diggs gets traded <laughs> from the Bills to the Texans out of nowhere. And that's earth shattering as well and maybe the uh the earthquake that hit the new york metropolitan area was an aftershock i don't know <laughs> but um stefan diggs getting traded from the bills to the texans and the bills taking a 31 million dollar dead cap hit this year three million dollars more than what diggs would have been on the cap this year if he stayed and played does nothing to throw all of us off the scent of Diggs and Josh Allen not getting along and the amount of smoke that screened us from whatever the hell was going on behind the scenes sand thrown in the face to try and keep the eyes averted from whatever the hell was going on between one of the top quarterbacks in the game and one of the most talented receivers in the game this does nothing but add fuel to all of that because why else would you take Stefan Diggs and say, okay, Stefan, we will take $3 million more in our cap this year to send you away than it would to keep you here. Now, you can say, well, they saved $19 million in cash on this deal for 2025. That's, that's cash. And you know what NFL owners like? They like cash. <laughs> so that, look, it's 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 not it's not like you know the Pagulas are going to be calling JG Wentworth, you know. But eight seven seven. Uh, uh, I get it. Yes. But <laughs> that's not why you do it. I mean, this is not why you do this, especially sending him to a team that is on the ascent in your conference. I mean. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with the Houston Texans now. So why would you just say get out? Certainly when you've already lost Gabe Davis and you took your cap medicine on some top players on defense and your fan base is wondering if your window's closing or your your strategy's changing to the point where you're not gonna have much of a window this year. And by the way, the Chiefs are only going to be a two-time defending champ that seems to be just as strong as ever. And you had a problem beating them last year. This just in. So you're going to take Diggs and send him to Houston. Now then, it does on its face look troubling for you Bills fans. And it does on its face seem to be A moment where the Bills are going to shift, clearly. We're going to find out just how insanely talented Josh Allen is and just how deep of a wide receiver pool that this appears to be in this draft. But I'm just wondering if we are seeing in this copycat league a shift in strategy at the wide receiver position to turn this group into something like a running back group where you can take some kids out of college and do just as well with them, paying them hardly anything combined and win a Super Bowl anyway when you got the talented quarterback. And I'm just wondering 
if this wide receiver group that I saw at the combine and we're hearing talked about nonstop in this draft has just been the impetus for a team like the Bills to do what they've done with their wide receivers, let Gabe Davis walk, trading away Stephon Diggs, and clearly there was something between Diggs and Allen. You're hearing it nonstop off camera. I hear it all the time. I've heard it all the time for months. Can't pin it down when you speak to them. They're not going to bring it public. Deep dives get close to the subject matter. But that aside, I'm just wondering if we're not seeing a shift at the position, the way general managers view it, and the Green Bay Packers are the template. The Green Bay Packers, wide receivers, right now, that wide receiver group, collectively, put it all together, and their position group counts $11 million on the Packers cap. Can you name three of them? Some of you can. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. Those are the two that jump to mind. You know, you got obviously Jaden Reed might be somebody you picked up on your fantasy wire just in time for the playoffs. I'm just wondering if the Packers, okay, we got the young quarterback who's a stud and we've got these wide receivers you've never heard of that weren't, you know, sufficiently mature or they were too green in Green Bay for Rodgers. Now they're all grown up and they're grown up and they're grown up and they almost made the NFC Championship game. I'm just wondering if the Packers showed the Bills go get a bunch in the draft. It's not like the cupboards bare. That kid Shakir was a real tough load to handle mm-hmm. in the playoffs. I mean, obviously Dalton Kincaid is right, and you, one you, of the top tight ends in the league. And you're just going to load up maybe at the running back position as well. well. James Cook came on at the end of the last year. And I'm not sitting here thinking this is the end of the Bills window because you got Josh Allen, and I do trust Brandon Bean, and you just look at what the Packers did with their receivers. And you know who also might be thinking that too? Is my guy sitting in an RV somewhere on a beach? Because they got Justin Herbert, and they trade away Keenan Allen, and they let Mike Williams walk. And they got the fifth overall pick, and they're going to potentially have their choice of all the wide receivers of this draft. Their top choice. Bears apparently meeting with Marvin Harrison Jr. today. Good luck with that. That's not a smoke screen for the quarterback, folks. That's, that's like a, that's a nine. That's a nine. It's a nine an, or you might up. be the you, or you might move up to go get him. Because wow. look what the Texans did last year. They're like, we'll draft Stroud, then we'll trade up and we'll take the defensive rookie of the year, too. So I'm just wondering if the Packers might be showing the way. And there are a bunch of teams saying. Okay, so we just saw the Chiefs win back-to-back Super Bowls with a running back who was drafted in the seventh round. Maybe we'll take a bunch of second, third, fourth, fifth round wide receivers, build a really talented young wide receiver room, and go to work with our stud quarterback and a defense that's going to put him in a better position to matriculate. Don't sleep on the bills is basically what I'm saying. They've all been saying that. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.